Her Excellency, Madam Sharon Dijkstra, Minister for Agriculture of the Netherlands, Honorable Mr. Arnie Mathison, Assistant Director of FAO, Mayor of The Hague, all attended ministers, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a truly remarkable to be here at this important meeting of the Global Ocean Action Summit. And I highly appreciate the hospitality of the government of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, the shared effort by FAO and the World Bank to convene this milestone event here in The Hague. This reflects a truly multilateral, multilateral and global collaboration at an unprecedented level. And I would like to express Indonesia's gratitude and we are proud to be part of this historic event. Excellency, honorable guests, issues related to ocean management and sustainable use of these resources are of global importance, not only for their economic aspect, but also its role on environmental and social aspects. Threat to the food, to food security, coastal community problems, increasing ocean pollution, illegal practices in usage of marine and coastal resources, and marine-related natural disaster are faced all around the globe. And these issues has become increasingly important because such a large portion of the global population lives in coastal areas. The role of the ocean in our global climate system, the increasing volume of commodities transported by sea, and the need to sustain and protect fishery resources forces us to pay more atten attention to the ocean sustainability and coastal seas over the next decades. Minimizing loss of life and prosperity and avoiding environmental disasters require significant improvements for the availability of ocean information quality. And these challenges are still daunting. Distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, in June 2013, the Regional Asia Meeting was convened in preparation for this summit. And this meeting captured the common vision that by 2030, healthy ocean and inland waters of Asia would support global and regional food security and nutrition through the approach of we call as blue growth, for the fishery and aquaculture sectors, whilst improving of the livelihood and ecosystem services. Asia accounted for 67% of total global fish production in 2011 and has become a, the major source of animal protein and nutrition to the global human population. However, the region also faces major challenges in sustaining this important role. Aside from the rapid increase in population, marine and fishery resources in many parts of Asia show declining trends to degradation of critical habitats, loss of biodiversity, pollution, prevailing destructive fishing practices, and impact of climate change. And we simply cannot secure any benefit from our ocean if we let this issue continue. Then human-related environmental degradation must be solved through good stewardship and best practices of partnership. And there are concrete action produced by our last regional Asia meeting, including first, is integrating approaches that ensure sustainable increase in food production, poverty elevation, shared prosperity, sustainable development through partnership that invests in science and policy at local regional scales. Secondly, is strong governance models to enable the sustainable and equitable use of ocean and water resources. And third is improving market access 
and reducing value chains inefficiencies, including in post-harvest processing and trade, particularly in coastal and island developing nations. And the fourth is providing the right financing mechanism to catalyze blue growth and to ensure that investment in long-term sustainability are viable and bankable proportions, pro propositions. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to share some information related to the ocean and, in, and its importance to Indonesia. Indonesia waters occupy at least 70% of our total national territory, and most part of the country, there are numerous aspects of livelihoods that are related to and dependent on the sea, on the ocean, and Indonesia's economy traditionally depends on the ocean and its natural resources. With our mega marine biodiversity as a comparative advantage, Indonesia realizes that responsibility to safeguard the sustainable development of its marine resources. And Indonesia today is the 16th largest economy in the world and on current uh, trends, we hope, according to the uh, McKinsey's Global Institute, Indonesia will be the seventh largest economy in the world in 2030. It has a population of 249 million people, and the GDP was 1.1 trillion in 2011. And GDP has grown consistently for about 4 to 6 percent over the past decade, a period when many other countries experienced huge fluctuation in their GDPs. Our government realized the important role of marine and fishery resources as a driving force to support national economic development, poverty reduction, absorption of carbon emission, and the importance of combating IUU IU fishing optimizing environmental services, and acceleration of marine and fishery industrialization in the frame of blue economy approach. At this opportunity, I would like to inform you that the current Indonesian marine fishery development is laid upon the concept of blue economy. And this is in line with the direction from the President of the Republic of Indonesia as stated in the plenary session in the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development held in 2012 in Rio de Janeiro, mentioning that blue economy is our next frontier, which enable us to maximize the environmental services and sustainable economic values. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, regarding food security, this issue remains particularly high on our agenda. High food prices and price volatility will likely continue and pose threats to the poor and vulnerable countries. Food security depends on adequate available resources, such as fishery resources, and however, illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing practices seriously threaten responsible fisheries and hence have direct impact on food security. IUU fishing practices have significant negative impacts on fish stocks, the environment, livelihoods of the future of marine and coastal communities, particularly alarming our food security. And through this summit, I strongly urge to bring together government and private to identify creative solution to jointly achieve the vision of hunger and malnutrition free, contribute to the effort of improving the living standard of coastal community, especially the vulnerable small countries. Distinguished guests, we are continuing our efforts to, to combat IU fishing, which are detrimental to our fishery resources, as well as the nation economy as a whole. 
Indonesia welcome and fully support the recent declaration by the FAO, among others, to combat illegal fishing. The FAO has identified illegal fishing as a major impediment to the achievement of sustainable world fishery. And we realize that combating it, even for areas inside national jurisdiction, is challenging, and more so for areas outside countries exclusive economic zones such as at the high seas or areas beyond national jurisdiction where governance is particularly complex. Indonesia strengthens our its outreach, outreach and training programs for fishery managers to improve ocean governance and particularly to combat IOU fishing. There is no alternative than for countries to work together to deter and effectively reduce these destructive activities that continue to cost billions of dollars in losses to our economy. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, the title of this meeting is Global Ocean Action Summit for Food Security and Blue Growth. And for Indonesia, ocean-based activities continue to develop in the coming decades in order to improve our ocean-based economy that promotes economic growth with equity for present and future generations. And Indonesia has recently mainstreaming, mainstreaming into our national development plan, then incorporate policy of sustainable marine and fishery development by applying the principle of blue economy. And together with the application of sustainable development approach, and the concept of the blue economy, this new policy aims to promote more coordinated and integrated ocean governance. And in addition, this policy encompasses three main principles, which is uh, natures, nature efficiency, zero waste, and social inclusiveness. And to implement these three principles, we are developing such frameworks and prototype which produce on developing management for integrated sea use, and secondly, promoting a blue economy investment model. Development management for integrated sea use refers to concept of improving natural resources, efficiencies, and protecting the environment. Integrating sea use planning and marine spatial, spatial planning is required as guiding prin principle of ocean policies and ocean-related measures. And Blue Economy Investment Model deals with new ways of doing business, less natural resources, giving zero waste, and producing diverse products, services, and revenues. And with innovation and creativity, every part of the raw material will be valuable for the business and produce significantly more goods and services when compared to a conventional approach. And in implementing blue economy model investment in the area of ocean and ocean-related e economic activities will improve the economy and at the same time to promote global environmental protection for a better, better future. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, I strongly believe that in order to achieve a healthy and more resilient ocean that could support food security and nutrition and sustainable blue growth in Asia, we need to avoid short-term easy policy fixes. Instead, I would call for better harmonized and integrated policy based on a shared long-term vision and realized by strong commitment to build sustainability into development policies for ocean, essentially, essentially there are some key steps that we need to undertake, and this included, included among others like creating an enabled environment for action on partner, partnership initiative. Secondly, is increasing investment and cooperation for the blue economy and blue growth. Thirdly, is create, creating the confidence and enthusiasm for sustainable blue economy. And to conclude my remarks, I once again would like to re reiterate the government of Indonesia's support to this collaborative action 
as a global effort for food security and blue growth in and in particularly I invite you to attend our side event during lunch time today to discuss matters on more detail in sharing knowledge good ocean governance for food security and blue growth and our exhibition booth is called blue economy and partnership last but not least as part of indonesia commitment indonesia will host the world coral reef conference in 2014 in manado indonesia on the 16th of may and this conference aims to reaffirm global commitment to address the serious degradation of coral reefs and to call for more concrete cooperation and coral reef ecosystem management. I am pleased to invite you all to this conference. Thank you.